Four armies enter the battlefield, only one will be able to leave alive. Hey what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to some more Total War Arena. We are back again with another Steel Faith Overhaul mod gameplay. Today we have a free for all which should be really really exciting as everyone has been giving unlimited money. So everyone can bring literally everything they want to in this engagement. And it's going to be fun to see just some crazy army, army compositions, everyone having golden chevron experience. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing who will come up on top. So in today's battle we have the chaos we have the lizard men we have the beastmen and we also have the forces of the beastmen once again they make up the secondary army so quite a few beastmen forces um, who are going to be challenging everyone i wonder if these guys are going to team up and have a beastman victory or if they're going just to savagely brutalize each other and it looks like it's going to be the latter there as they're already formed up ready to attack so let's quickly just have a little look see what people are bringing i'll do this super quick and then we'll jump straight into the battle so starting off for the lizard men we do have some croxagors on the front line then we're going to have some temple guard who i imagine are just going to make up the entirety of the formation of the uh, lizard men then we also have some ancient Stegodons along with some Bastilodons with the uh, the sunlight crystals then we also have the re revitalizing ones down here which are always great because they can just buff up so many of the men forces and make them really strong we also have some feral Stegodons along with a Carnosaur a Scarred Veteran uh, some Skink Chiefs to pass off some magic and then finally we do have a nice little contingent of Chameleon Skinks and just normal Skinks skirmishers so this men army has a very very heavy kind of focus on these large creatures and they also have some pterodon riders right here and as we make our way over to the forces of chaos we can see i imagine they're going to have an entire line of just chosen and chosen great swords yeah literally that's just going to be a golden chevron chosen so we're not going to have the largest army out of everyone but they're going to have just a lot of quality they also are going to have these amazing hell cannons back here which are just going to rain fire and devastation down upon all their opponents there's five hell cannons here and i wouldn't be surprised if they're already in range we also have some dragon ogres uh, some dragon ogre shagons by the looks of it and also some chaos knights along with a chaos lord on a chaos dragon then if we go and make our way over to the forces of the beastmen and do keep in mind this is using the steel faith overhaul mod which is why you have these corn gores um, as long with all these uh, these pestigores and also the zinch gores and stuff like that we also have some bestigore best herds as well as the slang gores i love how they're just you know this is how they get kind of defined as slam they just they're just shirtless basically with their nipples on show free the nipple <laughs> We also have some Ungor Raiders back here along with two Cygors, um, a Bray Shaman and also this uh, Malagor the Dark Omen. And we also have some Centigor Cavalry. And finally for the last force before we get this underway we do have some of the Centigors of Great Weapons. We also have some more Cygors who are actually already unleashing on the uh, the other Beastman faction. And we also have some Minotaurs lots more Centigors. Uh, actually some Giants, some Ungor Raiders then we also have some Slangors some Pestagors and obviously everything else with a small contingent of the Centigors vanguarded. So this kind of this army's gone for a lot more heavy infantry, this army's gone for a lot more maneuverability and hard hitting units. Well I guess we'll just click play and let this battle unfold as we do have a cycle rod finding a hit just hitting one of the Centigors. What a poor Centigore that was just happening to get hit during that then that boulder throw. Another one coming in, two coming in. That one hitting big money Salvia right there. Another one just kind of hitting the gap. So some Centigores are going to be pushed back to go ahead and try and deal with the kind of flanking force sent out by the uh, the other Beastmen Centigores. I'll call these the White beast, uh, Beastmen and these guys the Yellow Beastmen just to make it easier. Um, so we're going to have a first little engagement here or not? No, the White Beastmen do look like they are falling back. They don't want to get involved in this so close to the rest of the army, especially because we do have these Razor Gold Chariots coming across. If we take a little look out the side, we can really see the Lizardmen army is con completely moving to go ahead and interact and engage the forces of the beastmen they might also come in the center chaos just look like they're sitting back and camping using their strong front line to hold this choke point and their hell cannon just to unleash hell yeah let's see that yeah the hell cannon has already wiped out one unit oh god look at them shots just coming in they're just so deadly and the thing is as well their range is so good as well they can just constantly bombard their opponent on the move and just always force them to come to them. I mean, the, the beastmen are coming in fast, so they're going to be able to close this gap very, very quickly. But it just depends how many men they actually lose on this charge. Especially when the Hell Cannon can just do damage like that. 
shots coming in. I would not stop if I was these guys. We're also going to have some of these Bastilodons coming into the front of these chosen swordsmen. And we're also going to maybe have the Dragon Ogre Shackles coming over. But it looks like they're just chilling right now. But I imagine we'll see them going in as the Animal Patrol. Someone call Pest Control. Because there is definitely an animal problem right here. As they come flying into the front lines. That's brutal. How's the rest of the line going on? With so many Ongor Raiders coming in now. And just shooting out as many arrows as they can. But whittle down the HP. And this is a smart move. Because I imagine that the ancient Skegelons and stuff don't have like crazy good missiles. Resistance. Maybe they do. I just I, I guess I could look, but I'm a bit too lazy for that. So because of that, they might this might just be a really good way to get a bunch of cheap archers as this gorbal just comes flying and actually gets stopped in his tracks by the lizard men. I guess they do have charge defense against large, that's why they are so good. And they're pushing on, trying to take care of more of this front line as more and more of the battle does unfold. We look at the power, we can see Chaos and the White Beastmen leading up front. The Lizardmen are second, or uh, third, I should say. And then finally, we do have the uh, the Yellow Beastmen coming up in last. So it's interesting that both the, uh, this faction and the Chaos faction are coming out on top. And the majority of the front line of the Chaos haven't really engaged. I think one of the main reasons they're getting so many points is they're dealing with a large portion of expensive Lizardmen units. And obviously, they're also just hammering this front line as we get Dragon Breath coming down, almost wiping out half the unit of the Bestigors. Looking down this battle line as well, we can see the Hell Cannon just going on a mission of its own, along with the rest of the Chaos. And I mean, these Chaos are extremely elite. These are chosen Golden Chevrons, so they're going to be able to hold the line pretty nicely against these Inchgors. The arrow fire is coming in. Look at that. We will fight in the shade, my brave warriors. That is insane. It's not even doing too much damage as well. Just the sheer amount of Ongor Raiders. And the rest of the Beastman army is, isn't being committed, which I don't know if I agree with that. They should try and use it whilst a large portion of the Chaos are busy. Going back over here on the far left, we do have the Yellow Beastman and the White Beastman going at it. All the Centaurs fighting. There are actually also some Minotaurs over on this flank, which I guess could be really useful in the center. Um, and you can see the Beastman just run. I mean, the Chaos is running away with it right now. The, uh, the White Beastman, if they can deal nicely with the Lizardmen, which they should be able to, because the thing is, the Lizardmen are throwing half their force into these guys and half their force into the Chaos. So because of that, they're missing out on like half of their army, as well as like mainly the hard hitting units as well. So because of that, they're going to be struggling, and you can already see a lot of their infantry. Oh, they've also sent infantry over here to the Beastmen. A lot of their skinks are making their way right here. So that's going to be another way, just meaning that the white Beastmen can just envelop them and do a lot of damage. You can see all the Chameleon skinks and the Normal skinks and the Pterodon riders just all pushed up here. Oh, we got a huge banishment right here. Banishment? This is banishment, sorry. This, what is this spell? I can't even remember. Would it show me if I hover over? No, it won't. Oh, it's, it's shade, piece of shades, piece of shades. Yes, that's what it is. A huge bit of shades coming off. And the Beastman army just doesn't look like it has much fight in it right now. The Chaos are just holding their line and smashing away these, these Beastmen. And they're doing a great job of it as well. And I, I just feel like they, they've got this one on lockdown already, just or at least defeating this army. Obviously, they still have to defeat the other, whatever's left on the other side, but... They've nicely managed to deal with the strength of the of the Lizardmen over here. You can see all of these dead dinosaurs just laying at the feet of the Dragon Ogres. Then the front line, there's just so many Beastmen, they just did not attack in the full force. I mean, they still are trying to strike down, but Chosen are just holding this line. 52 kills on this unit. And it's just not enough. I mean, they have such a good reserve in these Hell Cannons, continuing just to rack up kills. They're making some progress, granted, like in the center, the Razor Gold Chariots are helping out, and the Pestigors and the Zinchgors. But it just doesn't seem like it's enough to break the lines of chaos. They are holding firm. We have the dragons making their way over here, and again, they just barely took any damage from that missiles. The Lizard Men are basically completely spent. Oh my god, they really don't have a lot left whatsoever. A few skinks roaming the battlefield. And these dragons, I imagine, are going to come over and just do brutal dragon breath. Actually trying to focus down the Minotaurs. Not a bad idea. And then these guys are just going to pour in there and burn these beastmen alive. Hitting both Lizardmen and Beastmen. Wow. All the Archer Fire is immediately going to be focused, though, towards hitting down these dragons. The HP just doesn't seem to be going down from them whatsoever. I mean, it's a lot of arrows. 
but I guess it's just a lot of crappy archers which just don't seem to be doing enough damage. It would be good if the Ongors maybe turned. I mean, but the good thing is, like, the Beastmen on this side, the White Beastmen, do still have two Giants who are pretty healthy. They're going to go back to focusing down this, uh, these ancient uh, Stegodons with the Skink Priest on top. The arrows, look at them all. They're just bouncing off and finding a mark in the ground. That is so deadly. So I guess we'll see the rest of the Beastman force move round now to meet up with Chaos. Chaos has just killed the uh, Yellow Beastman general right there. And they're all routing off the field. So the Chaos held firm. They're, on, they're almost 20,000 points ahead. Wow, they just incinerated them. But I guess they have been fighting two armies, which really makes up for that. So I wonder what we will see. Will we see the Beastmen forming up their line um, against the Chaos? Will the Chaos just sit back with their Hell Cannons and force them to come to them? I'm surprised these Hell Cannons honestly aren't shooting already, if I'm honest. But again, the Lizard Men have a few men left. They've kind of retreated back to this corner of the battlefield to hold up and use these Bastilladon solo engines. Do as much damage as possible, and that's like some 88 millimeters. They got an 88 millimeter! As, uh, as the Call of Duty kids would say nowadays. So they're, they're looking just to get back to this flank and do as much damage to these uh, these Centigors whilst the person's not playing, paying attention to them. Yeah, they've got a few Croxigors left as well. So uh, two units of Croxigors left, so they can definitely have a huge impact in this battle. The rest of the Chaos have just kind of moved across this bridge to scare off anyone who were in their way. And now they are retreating back, probably to form up uh, a nice little layer of defense. And again, just use these Hell Cannons, which are already still shooting. To just hit anyone in their path. I mean, at the moment, they're just focusing down with Saigor. Again, not really much damage uh, whatsoever. But I love the way that... I, I honestly thought we just remember out of this fight. And I love the way they've come back ready to do as much damage as they can that's absolutely awesome the dragons are still just being a huge nuisance over on this right flank coming in using their dragon breath annihilating units and then getting the hell out of there and a lot of the infantry in all fairness for all the white beastman forces are dead uh, pretty like depleted the minotaurs are going to come in and try and duke it out with the uh, dragon ogres we also actually have a crocodile routing through the field of battle that is not good for the Lizard Men. That might hurt the morale as they try and defend off in that corner. The Dragon Ogres are fighting, as I said, against the Minotaurs. And then we're also going to have the elite forces of the Chaos Warriors moving in as well, looking to get their hands dirty and chop these guys down. Luckily, these Chaos with great weapons do have armor piercing, which is very nice. We can also see more of the Beastman forces in the distance forming up. And also all their archers up there. We also you just see a bit of a uh, Stegodon in the background right here. Right up there you see is the top of his, uh, his, his unit just peeking over the hill as more of the forces come in. Chaos are just slowly committing more and more men. We actually have a, a bit, pretty big engagement. How the hell did these guys get all the way back here? As we do have more of the Chaos Lancers coming in. Yeah, I wonder how the Minotaurs managed to make their way all the way back. I guess they just rushed through this gap right here. And you see more of the Minotaurs just chilling there. 60,000 points for Chaos. They are just holding this line, doing so much damage. I guess their aerial units, they're unmatched in the air. To be fair, like the Beastmen did bring a lot of archers, but they just don't seem to be doing enough damage. You need more, like, you know, I guess, like aerial units of your own, not that the Beastmen really have any. Apart from the Manticore, I don't think the Beastmen have any. As well as that, you just need like more like cannons and stuff to focus these guys down. Anti-large missiles. The Beastmen and Chaos just going at it right now. Oh, some aspiring champions here as well. They're going to be extremely useful. And I think it's just the rest of the missiles coming in now. As the lizard men do look to get themselves involved using all their skinks, uh, chameleon skinks and just normal skinks. Shooting up, trying to focus down these guys. And that's good because you get a lot of points for killing these guys. Maybe they can try and cement their place, their second place, by taking out this opponent, which is exactly what they're going to do. What the hell are these rockets coming from? Oh, the uh, Pterodon riders throwing down their explosives. I was like, what? That looks like a Hellstorm rocket battery. More missiles coming in on the zombie or the Chaos Dragons. They just need to commit down, especially now the Centigors are going. 
These dragons just need to fall down and just slaughter these Ongor Raiders. I guess maybe it's not even worth their time, but if they pour down there, they will slaughter them. The rest of the Beastman forces have just piled in, and this is working so much in the favor of the Chaos right now. They can honestly just sit back and just slice these guys apart using their elite soldiers, especially if they have so many anti-large units as well. They can really just go to town on getting points. And you can see that's exactly what is happening, and it has been happening. The enemy have just been frying their forces onto the line of chaos and they've been holding. They are going to be using losing a Dragon Ogre. We do also have the General right here. What General is it for the White Beastman? We do have the Shadow, Shadow Weaver. Very nice. But yeah, Chaos uh, sent back the Minotaur Horde once again. We also have a Roman Dragon Horde. And they're just basically holding these Hell Cannons who are fully out of ammunition. Let's quickly take a look. I want to see how many kills each one of these guys. 100 kills on this one. 100 kills on that one. Uh, four, 100 kills on this one. 100, almost 200 kills on that one and 200 kills on that one. That's like so much damage and so many points. And that really speaks to why these guys have as many as they do. The rest of the lizard men just pouring in, trying to do a bit more damage as the chaos do throw out their knights to try and take care of all of these skinks. I mean, luckily, the lizard men do have a really nice setup here of just crossfire so that the chaos can only attack one unit whilst all the other guys open up on that unit. However, I imagine as soon as these chaos knights turn up, they will go ahead and be able to manage to, to mitigate that. They have four units of chaos knights roaming the battlefield. Chaos are oh, starting to lose over here on this left flank though. I feel like they've just got so many points that there's just no way anyone can come back and challenge them. Like the, the Beastman would have to kill so many of the Chaos to, to come out on top. But I guess there's still definitely a possibility. I mean these Chaos look so good. I love the shields of the Chosen. Just as like, like a pale skin kind of just like stretched over their shields with all these markings. They look really, really nice. And hopefully in the third game, like I imagine that's what a lot of people think is they're going to kind of do the four armies of chaos um, in, the, in the last game. And I think that'd be really cool just getting these different colored chaos, all the different stats and stuff to make them feel a bit more unique than just one chaos factor. Heads are going rolling as these Vestigors do come up against these uh, the Dragon Ogres. The Dragon Ogres are getting low. There's a lot of really good points there for them to have. The Dragons have finally descended upon these Beastmen going after the Zinchgors. And the Chaos Dragons, I mean, just look at that. They've probably already racked up so many kills. If we take a little look, I want to have a look. 158 kills. They have slaughtered anyone in their path. And these archers just weren't, like, didn't have the ability to deal with them. As we have another one of these Chaos Dragons going after them. 113 kills on that one. We'll look at the last one as well, which is kind of getting shot. Only 33 kills on that one, but 80,000 points on the uh, on the forces of Gamer Guy. And if you're wondering why that the, like, the points are so large in this game, it's because everyone's playing with Max Funds and the Steel Faith Overhaul mod. So because of that, there's just so many like so many units out there which are really expensive, which are kind of counting to these points. And we just, we just have the normal Dragon Ogres trying somehow to pierce the thick skin of these Pistilodons. Oh, the right? Or the DMA on the Ravage them indeed if you can break their thick hide. The rest of the Chaos units are being poured into this small gap. Again, trying to keep the Cycles and the Beastmen at bay is definitely a hard task. With the support of one Dragon Ogre, which still does remain, maybe they will be able to do it as we just zoom out and get a nice little glimpse of these guys going at it as a beastman just rips off his head. Wow, that is brutal. And there we go. I didn't definitely didn't just take a screenshot. For some reason, my screenshot always resets on Steam, meaning that it makes a sound. Uh, I always obviously turn it off, but it just keeps coming back. Nice Chaos Spawn being brought up behind the ranks of the Forces of Chaos. Um, by the Beastmen. Unfortunately though, they're actually really low on HP. Obviously they do uh, decay over time as well as getting faced against a unit of great weapons. Chaos Warriors just don't really stand a chance. I wonder if the Chaos Forces are going to break 100k. Going to be impressive. I mean, they get to run down a lot of these Skink Warriors if they do remain on the field. They also obviously have all these Chaos Dragons as well. Again, one of the Chaos Dragons actually is routing though. So it does look like the Ungor Raiders, along I imagine with the Gorgul, has managed to silence that and push it away. Dragon is just going to rip these guys apart. 
The Gore Ball does stand a chance, and obviously if we get this other Chaos Dragon making its way over as well, the front line for Chaos is just still holding, and just like so many dead uh, beastmen just standing at their feet. I mean, there's not actually too many bodies. I guess a lot of them got weakened over here. You can see the Hell Cannon fire just being brutal there. I guess this will be the main engagement we will just stick with. Wait to see who does come out. Of the about the Chaos are going to overwhelm. As the Beastman Infantry does slowly start to pull back. Only a minute left. There is obviously no doubt in my mind that the forces of Chaos have won this one. We are 90,000 points. Closest to them is Goatman on the... Oh, Goatman on the Beastman. That's hilarious. Um, on the White Beastman. Lizard Men did come third with 32,000, and then finally the, the uh, force. Again, I guess that's why the Chaos are so strong and have so many points, is the fact that they just slaughtered the Yellow Beastmen. That's why the Yellow Beastmen don't have as many points. They're also going to get Last Man Standing as well, which gives another couple thousand. I mean, there are still plenty dead here, and the Chaos did lose a lot of men. Their infantry were just so elite, and especially them Golden Chevrons. You can see everyone has Golden Chevrons, but I think that really mattered quite a lot. With the uh, with the chaos just making them infantry that little bit better. 18 seconds left of the battle. I guess it's just going to be them roaming down and killing these last couple of guys. You know, there's a few more infantrymen over here, but now the knights are coming in as well. And the dragons are just descending upon it. I guess we will be getting a mass rout across the ranks, and the chaos are going to be winning this day. Getting some extra points. Apparently, it was a close defeat, but obviously, it wasn't. Oh, I think, oh no, maybe the replay desynced. I mean, that's still a really cool battle, but I guess a re the replay must have desynced. It's really annoying. Sometimes I just don't get to these replays quick enough and they update the mods, because especially as well, uh, my Discord used so many mods, so sometimes these battles do desync, but I feel like that battle still turned out really, really well and exciting. Um, we'll give it to Gamer Guy in that engagement. I'm sure he did win in the, in the normal battle without desyncing. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, apologies about the desync, but I don't think it really affected the game too much. It definitely makes sense that the replay desynced, as I did notice quite a few units just sitting around more than anything else. Uh, but I still think it was a good battle, good enough to still upload. So make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more Steel Faith and Warhammer action, as well as just other epic battle stuff. And I'll see you guys next time, and fish out.